Um, if you kind of think of education as a game, um, the, the, the odds, the outcome, and the buy-in are kind of like this. It costs you about $30,000 to play the game, right? Um, your odds are, as good as, about, is, are about as good as a coin flip right now at 50-50. Um, and uh, the outcome kind of looks like this. If you win, sorry, you still owe me $30,000 in student loan debt. Uh, but you're also, you know, we're going to find you a job $70,000, $80,000 a year. Uh, but odds are you're probably just not going to like your job. If you lose, um, unfortunately, uh, no employment for you. Uh, hopefully Starbucks is hiring. I mean, you're also going to owe me $30,000 in student loan debt. Um, uh, once upon a time, that was not the story. Uh, you know, once upon a time, going to college, getting your degree, uh, graduating, you know, using that to get a job uh, was how it went. Today, the story's not quite the same as 53.6% of recent graduates are unemployed or underemployed upon graduation. Um, you know, this is not okay, and this is kind of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, let's kind of rewind, take it back a few years. I graduated high school in 2011, uh, you know, worked really hard in high school, got a 3.3 grade point average, 24 on my ACT, and used that to get me into the University of Michigan Dearborn where I was studying business. Um, you know, I was really proud of that at the time, really, really psyched up, really enthusiastic about that because that's what I thought I was supposed to be doing. Uh, you know, going to school full time and working over 50 plus hours a week and at the same time working uh, and taking out some student loan debt. Um, after my first year of college, I had an awesome opportunity uh, to move down to Dallas, Texas and work for the summer. Um, and when I came home, I was really at the first real crossroad in my life. You know, kind of decided between continuing my education, uh, going to college or just working. Um, at the time, you know, being 19 years old, I was making enough money to be able to financially uh, sustain myself and hopefully my future family. Um, but luckily, I decided to stay in school and, uh, took, and took two uh, online courses from a local community college. Uh, one of those courses was a sociology class. In my sociology class, the conversation of social mobility came up. And this is something for the first time in a long time that really actually stuck out to me, um, especially education's role in climbing the social ladder. Um, on top of that, I was also taking an English class uh, where I had the opportunity to write a research paper. The research paper I wrote was on education's connection to overall quality of life. Um, I was also at the same time doing a little bit of independent research on my own, um, on quality of life indexes across the world just because I thought that was very interesting. Um, you know, when I, when, I started my, when I started my research, I really had absolutely no idea, you know, where our education system had, has, had come from, um, you know, and then I learned that our education system was actually set up about 200 to 300 years ago during a time of major social change like never before. You know, we were gearing up for the Industrial Revolution. People were living in society like never before. Um, you know, so we needed a way to kind of acclimate people to living together in these new ways. Um, on top of that, you know, this is not a, you know, this is not a new stat. This probably shouldn't surprise a lot of you guys in the crowd. You know, that student loan debt is now the number one debt in America at $1.2 trillion. Um, what's surprising is how comfortable we become with that. You know, it's just, you, you graduate high school, hopefully you get into college, you know, you work a ridiculous amount of hours a week, and then at the same time, you're just gonna graduate with a little bit of debt. That's just the way it works. Um, that blew my mind, you know, just kind of thinking back to how comfortable people have become with that. Um, you know, if you think back to that stat I was talking about earlier, 53.6% of recent graduates are unemployed or underemployed upon graduation. Uh, there's gonna be about 21 million college students going through the system this year. Um, if we assume that they all graduate, that's over 10 million students that are going to be unemployed or underemployed with, on average, about $30,000 in student loan debt. Um, for me, that just didn't really sit well. If you kind of think about it like this, you go out to your favorite restaurant, uh, you sit down, you're looking at the menu. Um, are you picking your food based on, uh, on, on what sounds exciting, or something you want to eat, something that sounds like it's going to be tasty, or are you picking your food based on the price? Um, if you kind of think about it like this, are you picking... Are you going to school to, to follow your passion, to make an impact, something that actually is meaningful to you, or are you just going based on the, on the, on the outcome? Um, myself, you know, I decided I want to do something different. Um, if I wanted something different, so that's exactly what I did. Um, real quick, we're going to take a pause, take a little pulse check. Who here has ever heard of a MOOC? Go ahead and raise your hand. Thank you. Awesome. Go ahead, hands down. Who here has ever heard of a soul? Okay, great. For those of you guys who are unaware, we're going to kind of walk you through that real quick. Um, MOOCs simply stand for Massive Open Online Courses. What they are is 100% free online platforms where professors from some of the world's best universities like Harvard, Duke, uh, Stanford, UNC, um, Virginia, Michigan, Ohio State, their professors are hosting 100% free online courses where anyone in the world with the desire to learn an internet connection can have access to these lectures. Souls. 
Souls simply stand for self-organized learning environments. Um, if you think about college and university, what is it? You know, it's an intentional community with learning being what that community is revolved around. A soul is essentially the same concept. So about, about five months ago, um, you know, decided that I wasn't going to continue on with my education formally. I uh, was taking some of these online courses and wanted to start setting up some soul type environments back home. Originally from the greater Detroit area, started reaching out to some local community colleges and public spaces to try and get these things set up. I got back in contact uh, with the professor that I had wrote that research paper for and he sent me a list of resources for people that were already doing a lot of cool things. Uh, one of those happened to be Black Mountain Soul. If you guys aren't familiar, Black Mountain Soul is actually the world's first self-organized learning environment in education. Uh, and it's right here in your backyard. So I clicked on the website, you know, was scrolling around and was instantly hooked, you know, amazed. I was like, well, this is exactly what I'd like to be doing. So got in contact with them and about two and a half weeks later was on a 24 hour bus ride down here and been here pretty much ever since. Just to kind of give you guys an idea of, you know, the, the environment that I'm living in, like I said, from the original greater trade area, this is a picture I actually took of, of a hike we took in the morning to watch the sunset, because I can do that, you know, it's in my backyard, it's beautiful. This is a picture from my workspace, just to give you guys an idea of how, you know, aesthetically soothing and relaxing this environment is. On top of that, you know, I get down here after my 24 hour road trip and I'm surrounded by some of the most motivating and inspirational people I've ever been around in my whole entire life. This is Chris Coleman. Uh, Chris was here for two short months and I didn't get to know him too well, but since then I've had stayed in contact with him uh, uh, pretty well. He's the founder of Savvy Swap, um, which is an awesome phone application I'm sure you guys will hear about soon. And he actually raised uh, $20,000 in his first two months here to get himself to a business incubator in Philadelphia, and since then is in one of the most well-known incubators on the West Coast. This is Tanner Banander Lee. Tanner Banander's the man. Um, he's 100% fruitarian, originally from the Oregon area, and like uh, we were talking about earlier, I just got back from a six-day road trip with this guy. Um, he actually secured himself an internship with Raw Food Central, and will be spending a couple months down in Costa Rica. This is Zach Jones. Zach Jones is the man. Uh, he's the founder of the Well Show Project, which is a tiny house building company uh, that's set up to do some really good stuff, but he's been one of the most helpful people I've met in my whole entire life since the short time that I've known him. So, you know, I get down here, originally supposed to be down for about three months. Uh, you know, kind of, my, kind of my goal coming down was to really figure out, okay, what exactly does it mean to run a self-organized learning environment in higher education? Um, you know, if that's something I actually want to do. You know, try and help them out as much as I can and then see if it was duplicatable. But on a larger scale, what I was really trying to do was figure out how to get MOOCs and these soul type environments, you know, connected and be able to communicate that well. So I got down um, and instantly started doing a really deep dive, you know, just doing as much research on, you know, MOOCs, self-organized learning environments and the alternative higher education space as a whole um, that I could. And along with the good, um, you know, we also found some bad. And, you know, this is, these are four of the main pain points that I found in doing my research uh, that are most commonly associated with MOOCs. Uh, lack of peer-to-peer -peer interaction. Obviously, these are all online. Um, you know, you have discussion forums and things like that, but you're really missing out on that social part, which is so important in, in being a human. Uh, number two, lack of student to teacher interaction. Obviously, with tens of hundreds of thousands of students in these courses, it's tough for a teacher to authentically connect with each student. Low completion rates, although this is kind of a leading stat because literally anybody in the world with an internet connection can enroll in one of these, um, you know, it's definitely something that's talked about. And then, you know, finally, which is probably the most important part, is assessing understanding of content. You know, authentically assessing that. There's so many students in these courses, it's tough for a teacher to go through and grade every paper. So that's kind of tough. Um, and that leads me, you know, kind of to start talking about Moot Campus. Uh, originally, um, set up my own four-year degree program where I'll be taking 40 courses over the next course of a year uh, with all these, you know, open courseware online platforms. Um, and was actually on, uh, on my Facebook, got a friend request from a, from a girl in South Korea, uh, which I thought was pretty wild at the time. Um, checked out her wall to see what she was friend requesting me for. We actually been taking one of the same courses. Um, she sent me a message after I accepted her request and said, hey, I see you're over at Black Mountain Soul. That's really exciting. We're really pumped up over here in South Korea for what MOOCs can do you know, for our people. Uh, I was like, wow, that's amazing. How'd you hear about us? Um, she proceeded to send me a link to mooccampus.org, which is originally uh, a program that the soul was intending on running but didn't really have anybody to spearhead the project. Since then, um, I have taken over as the project manager and program developer for the world's first MOOC campus. Um, to give you a little bit of an idea of what we're aiming to do to address those pain points, um, you know, obviously we have that physical space. 
Uh, we've set up uh, and designed an agile learning um, an agile learning guide which sets up your learning into small sprints or larger batch or larger batches, which makes it easy to pivot, and then also gives you a really thorough understanding of the content that you're going over. Uh, we also work with reaching out to local businesses and organizations and people in the world that you would actually like to be working with or for, doing applied learning projects for them. So after these small sprints or batches, you, know, you, have, you have a chance to do an actual project that, that uh, demonstrates your understanding of the content. Um, and while you're doing this, you're also setting up a one-on-one -on -one mentoring situation with you and the person that you're doing this work for. So that way you're getting constant feedback and guidance from somebody that's actually in the real world doing it, um, you know, which is really exciting. So why is this, you know, why is this important? Why are we up here talking about this? Um, what can this really actually do for us? Um, well, number one, it gets rid of the artificial scarcity of credentials and admissions that the education cartel has held for such a long time that gives its pricing power, you know, to, to cut out these large demographics of people. Um, on top of that, you know, we, we really found that you don't need to be going four years uh, of college anymore and walk away with a piece of paper for that to tell you, you know that you're ready to enter the working world. You can now literally be anywhere in the world doing anything you want, utilizing these resources, utilizing these resources to pursue and follow your passion. Right now, one of the biggest things um, our economy and our world is missing is a lot of people that are passion driven. You know, a lot of people are going to school, like I said, to get a degree and that hopefully that degree will get them a job. And about 70% of Americans right now are unhappy with their, with their, with their employment, um, which is wild to think about. Um, you know, so we need more passion, more motivated people who are actually working to make an impact on something that is meaningful to them and not just working you know, to make money or you know, have a mundane daily job or anything like that. As, a, um, as the project manager and program developer of this, I'm also a participant myself. Um, so just to kind of give you an idea you know, of how quickly this thing is working, you know, aside from building the project, um, I've also got it back for the following year. And on top of that, I've had a chance to, to make real, uh, real connections with people in the alternative higher education space that are actually doing some pretty cool stuff, like David Blake um, at degree.com. I actually, on the road trip, stopped in San Francisco and got to sit down and have a cup of coffee with him. You know, it was amazing. But the thing is, is I'm not up here to talk about myself or anything like that. Um, what I'm really up here to, to talk about is the fact that, you know, I'm pretty normal. I'm a pretty normal kid. You know, a year ago, um, I was going to school full time, working full time, uh, you know, scraping to get by. Uh, I was actually rolling sushi for about eight bucks an hour, 55 plus hours a week. Um, so understand that anybody can do this. You can right now literally use these tools to go out there and create your own world. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, this conversation has come up, this question has come up, you know, where would you be? Uh, if you kept doing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, I have absolutely no idea, but I'm sure as hell happy to be up here talking to you guys today. Thank you.